Hi friends. In this series, I'm sharing basic neuroscience information that I know can be helpful if you're a voice teacher or coach. These five videos are also an overview of the learning model for NeuroVocal for Popular Styles. It's a brain thing. And I like to think it's pretty dang interesting. I am of the opinion that all voice professionals should be at least a little interested in brain because your brain sings before you do. If you find that you're interested in these short videos about brains and singing, then hang out for a little. There will be five videos total, each meant to give you some powerful information and show you what kind of things we learn in the neural vocal teacher training and certification. If you find that this is grabbing you by the curiosity, then get more information get excited and join the next NeuroVocal class. I am Meredith Colby, author of Money Notes, How to Sing High, Loud, Healthy, and Forever, and creator of NeuroVocal for Popular Styles, a way to approach singing for all the styles we sing into microphones that is based on brain science. I coach singers as well as offering professional training to voice teachers and coaches. The fanciest thing I offer, I think, is the NeuroVocal teacher training and certification class. I offer a free 30-minute meeting to anyone who's thinking about the fact that this training might benefit them. So if that's you, you can DM me or go straight to my site and schedule a time so we can meet. Now, let's talk braids. This is the model for NeuroVocal for Popular Styles, and this talk is about your predictive brain. In the last video, I talked about motor memories. So if you want a six minute primer on what motor memories are and how they work, then take a listen to that video. Motor memories feel automatic. You don't have to think about them, but clearly there's some thinking going on. So how does your brain know what motor memories need to be used for you to move through your day? How does it know how to help you meet your intention to pour your coffee, to walk your dog, to sing? It predicts. Your brain predicts what you're going to need. Both the invisible things of all the humming along in the background kind of stuff of your physiology, like chemicals, hormones, the energy, and also the observable needs of all the things you do in your day. Your brain has evolved to be an amazing prediction machine, and it's busily predicting during your every waking moment. Now, your next question might be, if this predicting brain thing is true, how does it know what to predict? And if that is your question, that is a very good question. Your brain predicts mostly based on two sets of data. The first is your sensory input. So you may think your ears are for hearing and your eyes are for seeing, right? Normal. But actually, they're just letting sound waves and light particles into your brain. Your brain is processing that sensory data and making enough sense out of it for you to, at best, do all the wonderful magical things that you do and at least stay alive. So that's the first thing your brain does. All that sensory information it's collecting and making sense of. In fact, here's a fun little thing I learned from Lisa Feldman Barrett's book called How Emotions Are Made. You know that feeling of being really thirsty and then you get the glass of water and you're like, just like, ah, oh, your whole body goes, finally, now I feel so much better. Well, technically, it shouldn't feel any better because it is going to take that water 20 minutes to make it to your bloodstream so that your thirst is actually relieved. But because your brain is predicting based on what it already knows about drinking and thirst quenching, it turns off the signal that was telling you you were thirsty. That signal calms down and your brain is satisfied that all is well for your physical well-being and it doesn't have to keep telling you, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And there's another thing your brain is mostly using to predict. The first is sensory data. And the second, like in the drinking water example that I just gave, is your memories. Your brain is combining sensory information with stuff it already knows to make predictions about what you'll need. This also includes your motor memories. So as you're predicting how far you need to reach to grab that pen, your brain is using sensory data from your eyes and body, and it's adding it to what it already knows about grabbing pens and making its best guess about what you will need to meet your intention to grab the pen. Your motor memories and your predictive brain work together all day, every day, to save you a bunch of cognitive effort, which is the sciency way of referring to brain energy, the energy your brain uses. So what sensory information is your brain reaching for to predict all you need for singing? That is the subject of the next video. I'm Meredith Colby. Thanks for being here with me. Have a good week.